Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be the YouTube Artist Collective piece and this theme is Versus and I loved how open-ended this, this theme was that let you tailor it to exactly what you want and that I always find really exciting and inspirational. But I wanted to give you a little glimpse into my first brainstorming session which actually ended up resulting in my final idea. But usually when I'm working on thumbnails for a piece like this it does not look overall pretty. It has some some definite missteps and ideas that are just completely not what it needs to be for the final. And I find that that's actually really helpful for me to be able to look back on how I work that way because it helps me to remember that I can sit down and start working and not necessarily have an idea in my head of where I want to end up and then as I'm simply drawing and thinking, I can let that speak to finally getting to this end result, which this is the thumbnail that I ended up going with right here. It was just a progression from, from no idea to where I started to get an idea of what I wanted to do. And what I wanted to do was actually a nightmare versus a daydream character personified. And one of the biggest things that I did differently in this piece is actually in the line work. So I decided that I really want to give brush and ink a good try to really see if I can get to a point where I can get line work that I'm really happy with. I've tried it in the past and I've really struggled with having control over it and getting the sharpness that I want out of it. With micron pens there is a much higher level of control but it does also come with a lot of drawbacks too and I've been feeling really really restrained by the way that I normally do my line work and by using micron pens. I find that it's just not letting me adapt in a direction that I want to go. I feel like I'm stagnating quite a bit with the line work and I want to be able to get to a point where I'm feeling like I'm constantly learning and growing with my line work and how it relates with the rest of the piece and how I can make sure that it has a little bit more give and take. So. I, I'm really excited about this. I think it's a fresh take that I've been needing for a long time now. And when I did the line work for this piece, it actually felt really natural, especially compared to the last time I tried it. I did a little mini painting with the inks that I'm using now, just to see if I could figure it out, if I could get used to it before I started this full piece. And I felt that I, I liked that execution even better than I like the control that I had for my microns even for something so tiny so I felt ready to commit to a full piece doing just brush and and ink and I'm really happy that I did that I will say it is significantly more gentle on my hand but I also felt that I took quite a bit longer of course that's just because I'm trying something new so hopefully as I get more practice I will be able to work quicker with this kind of a method but I can say that it felt a lot nicer. I didn't have nearly as sore muscles as I normally do and it does feel like something that that I can adapt. Like I said I can change the way that I execute the line work to be a little bit more immersive I think with the overall piece. And I'm actually using colored India ink which is light fast and waterproof actually when it dries. So I, th I think that I did try India ink last time I did this but I was not happy with the level of opacity that I had in some of the inks that I had used and this time I was kind of nervous that that would be a deal breaker for me where I would wouldn't be able to get the result that I wanted but I found that it really didn't make nearly as much of a difference as I thought it would. As long as I was being careful when I was putting down the line work so that I didn't go too thin with the layering of the ink. I made sure that there was enough ink on my brush and enough ink that ended up deposited in the line work. I was able to get a pretty consistent level of ink and color throughout all of the line work. And that was a big thing is in my past when I've done this kind of a technique or tried to at least, I would have spots that would have a lot darker levels in the line work and then others that would be a lot lighter and I think that's just a it's a careful thing I just have to be a little bit more thoughtful and careful about as I'm doing each stroke but 
but I was really blown away by this. I was really happy with the waterproofness of it and the permanence that I had once I put it down. And I will definitely make sure to put a link down in the description to the set of inks that I'm using today to do the line work. And then it came time to doing the color comps. So normally I like to do color comps before I do line work, but this one I had a pretty okay idea on how I wanted to balance out the different characters since this is a versus thing. I wanted to have different things assigned to each character so that they would have contrast. So the front character, the daydream character, I wanted him to have these pearly pastel dreamlike colors and the background character, the nightmare one, I wanted him to have more of these jewel tones, specifically warm jewel tones of the foreground character. I wanted him to have more cool colors. So there was a little bit of a division between the cool and the warm in this. And that allowed me to know basically what colors of line work I wanted to go into for both of them. So that way I could do some color comps afterwards. For some reason I work best when I do line work first and then I do the color comps. But but yes, this one, I tried to make sure that I had a really strong layering of values. I really feel like the values is one of the things that I'm the weakest at still. I, I don't think I've really gained much ground on that. So I'm trying to refocus my efforts on not just the color placement and creating contrast with colors, but also creating good readable values in the pieces that I'm doing. So I made sure that the forefront character daydream that he was really light and then the character behind him was darker and then there was the background smoke tendrils that were also very dark and that allowed it so that there was one main central character that your eyes would go to first and then the background and the background character, those would be grouped together a little bit. That way there would be a first and a second read as far as the hierarchy of the two characters. And this of course can be reversed where you can have a dark character on a light background. And I, I love the idea of really getting a good handle on values and being able to control them and utilize them in a way to, to really drive the way that the eye is moving in a piece as well as the impact that different areas have. But it is definitely something that I, I need more practice on. But I, I think that this one turned out better than most. I was trying to be a little bit more thoughtful with this. I did have to do a color, a couple of color comps where some of the first ones just didn't have very much contrast, especially between the front character and the character behind him. So I had to rework that a little bit, but I'm much happier with, with the layering of the values that I have now. And I tried to be really thoughtful with how many different colors I was incorporating into this piece. I, I love going really analogous with my color palettes. I know I say that all the time, but I'm trying to stretch beyond that a little bit more while still keeping it from looking really chaotic. So there were a few places in this piece where I specifically made a decision to vary outside of just the, the main cool colors and the main warm or warmer colors that I chose for the two characters. I specifically chose to go in with green as a glazing layer on top of the, the front character's hair, but I had to make sure that that color also was referenced elsewhere in this piece so that it didn't look out of place. I ended up going with the green hue to be in the hourglass, as well as a few other places in the character himself. I also ran into a little bit of a dilemma with what to paint the background color. So I, I find that I run into this problem quite a bit where I, I know what colors I want the characters to be and I know how I want the values basically to lay out. But when it comes to the background, this completely support layer, I have a hard time figuring out where I want the place to be. How do I want it to fit in with the rest of the palette so that it has enough contrast that, that characters don't get lost within it, but then it also isn't so out there that it no longer flows with the rest of the piece. And yeah, this one was a struggle. I, I worked with it on a few layers where in the little color comp is actually where I, I really fought with it, which is the right place to do it. But I went in first with this more sky blue kind of a color and I, I did not like that. It was too light for one so that it, it threw off the the darkness of the nightmare character. It just felt like suddenly there was this big space opened up behind him. So I knew that I needed it to be darker, but 
by process of working on that color comp, I ended up layering colors to get to this kind of a purpley blue color. And I really liked that. It was like I was introducing a new color, but it was actually more of a step between the two characters where I have this more purple hued red color, this burgundy for nightmare, and then more of these greenish cyan blues for the daydream. By having this purpley blue, it was kind of right in the middle of the two. So I felt like that was this happy medium, this blue color that both characters could stand out from. It also was dark enough that the front character had a lot of contrast against, but it was also more of a medium tone so that the background character still had the darker value, especially in his hoodie and in that smoke so that they weren't getting completely lost, but they were still a little bit more grouped together. And I have prints available of today's piece. I'm actually really happy with how this piece turned out as well as how the prints are looking. I, I just can't wait to be able to send them off to some of you guys, but I do have a link in the description right at the very top that'll take you over to my art shop. I also have this original painting available as well over there also on my shop. And I'm very excited to announce that I am going back into posting twice weekly videos here on my YouTube channel. I, I did really miss that and I have a lot of things in the works that I'm excited to show you guys here. So stay tuned for that. They will be on Wednesdays and Saturdays like I used to release them. But, but for now, that's it. So I will see you guys next time in my Wednesday video.